You are about to witness the very exciting story of a city and its people. It will be an adventure that will open new sights in familiar surroundings. That city is Detroit. From Michigan's motor town, a new export was added to cars, the Detroit sound. Detroit's always been a blue collar town. The first thing that happened, of course, was Henry Ford. You know, he started getting into mass production, and so you had different cultures from everywhere coming up to work in those uh, assembly plants. What's a manufacturing city? Cars didn't make Detroit, Detroit made the cars. <laughs> Detroit was just a happening city. Musically, people were working. A lot of the folks work for plants, and they want to, you know, after work to go out and they want to hear entertainment, kind of let off some steam. There were bars on every corner and music, just you could drive down the street and hear the music coming from That's great. Well, I noticed Detroit had a, a very unique sound for starting around the Motown era. The R&B scene in Detroit developed into a sound. So you had a lot of similarities and cross stuff going on. You'd have the, the more garage types and the rockers, and even the British invasion bands were so influenced by Motown. There were different sounds that people would come up with. When you're 13, 14, you start forming bands with all your friends, and we're going to these like teenage nightclubs. We loved it. We had ratted hair. It was like we called it a bubble, and it was huge. We would wear tight jeans, striped t shirts. We were hot. One of the things that was very popular is what they called shackled Levi's. They'd wear them low, and it came from the fact that the, the big thing with cars around Detroit was shackling. You reverse the springs so that the bottom back of the car was very low and the front of the car was very high. So kids were shackling their pants. into a multi-million dollar recording business, Motown Record Corporation President Barry Gordy Jr. says of Detroit Sound, Gospel is, is uh, or, or soul as it's called, is something that you feel from within and you do it spontaneously. And it is not something that you learn to do. And it is not something that you read and you do it well. You have to have a natural feeling for it. You know, Barry Gordy told me a couple of years ago, he said, when I said, you were the f first person that really understood and recognized the value in the music here. And he told me, I couldn't have started Motown Records in any other city but Detroit because of the talent I found here. Those bands had it hard. They first were trying to find a place to rehearse because they made a lot of noise. Just terrific bands, the Fugitives, the Pleasure Seekers. There's a musical culture in Detroit, and the culture is musical, not racial. Detroit is a working man's town. We're a factory town. It's the anger and the frustration of being surrounded by machines that are pounding out all around you. I think that's how most young musicians around this area learn anyway, they're all around here. When a society gets to a point where the youth are restless, and you, you can sense it, I, I felt that there was a revolution going on. So you still have a very big music heritage in Detroit. That's the common denominator. That's the gift the city gives to the musicians, and the musicians give the music gift back to the city. It is a gift. It is it's absolutely a gift. Come on over to my side. Oh, baby. Very, very uh, exciting place to be. I think it was the energy of the city at that time. The pounding out of factories, we were getting into the rhythm. You know, when you hear drums going, you start getting into the thing, and the, and the citizens were, and the kids were. In other words, you may do it your way, but we're going to do it our way. Thank God for that. Detroit.